great. Yep. The stream has started. Now mm -hmm. I'm waiting to see for if Twitch accepts the stream. Mm -hmm. Twitch has accepted the stream. I'm going to see if YouTube has accepted the stream. YouTube has accepted the stream. Oh, good. Now we're, we're ready for Facebook to accept the stream. Come on. Facebook has accepted the stream. Put the clapper in front of your face. When you hit the clapper, you're on the air. Okay, thanks. Oh. That was supposed to be for an hour. Someone said it for, for one second. Okay, wh okay, where's the clapper? I have the clapper. Oh, oh, hold so on. Yeah, that's okay. okay. Just because that wasn't set up. That was the one other piece. Yeah, thanks. Right. Put the clapper in front of your face. Thanks. Your thanks. Welcome to Talking Peace with the Western New York Peace Center, being produced here at Think Twice Radio in the home of the future, also the home of our friend and producer, Richard Wicca. Thanks, Richard. And thank you to our friends at WN, um, WBNY, Buffalo's original alternative radio station coming, coming out of Buffalo State College. So we thank our friends at Buff State. Thank you very much, and we thank WBNY. And uh, when I think of thankfulness, I think of our indigenous friends and the Ganonio, and they are the words that are said before all else. So we're going to have Jill Yaguan East Claus is Tuscarora is going to do the Ganonio. <sighs> uh, uh, twent, um, twent, let's get to here. Yaguan East, gather rock whiskey, I said there. Um, if I make mistakes. Um, I'm going to do it in English tonight because I feel mm. like that language will identify with more people than my, my language. But I still practice and, and we still have uh, uh, wonderful um, re uh, Immer immersion, uh, I guess to say. Well, anyways, okay. Um, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, okay. <sighs> Tonight we gather our hearts and our minds together as one to give thanks for the people. All the people that are here tonight, all the people that are listening, all the people that this will reach. We give thanks because we are all related. We all have the same color blood. We are, we are related to each other as brothers and sisters and grandmas and grandpas as we are related to each other as nieces and nephews and aunties and uncles. We give thanks to the people that are our relatives. From that um, we, re we raise our eyes through creation, and we first, we first look to the people. And after the people, we look to the earth. And, and we see Mother Earth and all that she provides for us. Our Mother, the Earth that loves us, yeah, she has provided such a, a home, a beautiful home, where our natural world is amazing. Uh, and I want to give thanks for our Mother the Earth, you know, and all the resilience she, she has. I, I want to say thank you for the pandemic because it taught us how staying home she healed. The dolphins in Italy, thank you for the dolphins in Italy. Thank you for all the bear and the deer and the fish, the whales came back to life when everybody stayed home. For one year, the earth started to heal. I'm thankful to her. And as we raise our eyes up through creation, we give thanks for the waters and the medicines that keep us healthy. We, give, we bring our hearts and our minds together as one to give thanks for all the medicines. Yes, that keep us all healthy. Everyone in the whole world, we all need to heal. Mm. And we give thanks 
for the healing that we have had in our hearts, in our minds. And we give thanks for the healing that our people have done through the medicines. Thank you. As we raise our eyes up through creation, we look and we see the trees. They're next. We give thanks. The trees, we have so much respect for the trees. You know, if only, if only the Americans understood how important a tree is, we could change the world. Just the simple idea that you have to stand in one place. I have respect for you, my my relatives. The maple tree, the leader of the trees. We also give thanks for the the white pine, the tree. That is another one of their relatives. They're different. The white pine, we give thanks to you and the teaching that you have provided about how to be peaceful. And the teaching that you gave to us that if anybody wanted to look for peace in this world, all they had to do was go down and dig into the ground and look for the white root, follow it back to its source, and you'll find the white pine, and you'll find the great law of peace, this great tree has taught us that we're human beings and that we can do better. We can do better in this world. Mm. So we bring our hearts and our minds together as one and give thanks. <laughs> oh, to the thunder beings, give thanks. Why well, raise my, the thunder beings, the, they're invisible. Yeah, oh, sorry, I'm getting wild over here. <laughs> 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 oh, okay, the thunder beings, yeah. I, I have a great love and respect for you, and I love you so much. And thank you for your, your pity on us, thunder beings. Thank you for listening to us when we give thanks for your first voice when you come to the land and I'm concerned I seen a YouTube that you were thundering for 15 minutes straight and I want to know what that was all about so that's between you and me yeah with thunder beings we bring our hearts and our minds together as one to continue to raise our eyes up through creation, let's see, and we, oh, we get to the sun, our elder brother, our uncle, our grandpa, oh, I don't know, I just love you, the sun. Um, I am very grateful to the teachings I got from you, from the sun dance. I want to say now, the teachings, uh, oh, and my relationship with you, Grandpa. And Grandma Moon, the, yeah, we bring our hearts and our minds together. So I want to give thanks to Grandma Moon. I have so many questions. My heart can only send them to you, Grandma Moon, to say, answer some of these we're wanting to unify the people of the world, Grandma. I humble myself and give thanks once again to bring our hearts and our minds together as one to give thanks. The stars. Our relatives. <laughs> Uh, we got a big family, you know? We're part of a big thing here, you know? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we as humans are really just starting to realize that we're human beings on this earth. Mm -hmm. and we're part of a big universe. Mm -hmm. uh, I, uh, thank you to our relatives. 
<sighs> and, and finally, the great creator of life. Oh, the four protectors. Oh, forgive me. I, wa I want to acknowledge the four protectors of peace that are guiding and protecting us and holding us in your hands. I give thanks to you, the four protectors of peace, holding the earth and looking after each and every one of us and bringing that light, that goodness and grace to each and every person in this whole world. <sighs> four protectors. <sighs> yeah. Genurekwa. And, and the most high, you know, all the different beings of creation and creator, I'm um, giving thanks to the source of it all, the great mystery. Mm -hmm. yes. the great mystery. So mm. I turn this over to you, creator, and all these words we put into here to give thanks. You take care. I give them to you. Una is Scotty what not, yeah, eat is such dead east. Donate. No. No. Jay. So, so grateful, so grateful for that, Jill. Yaguan East. Thank you so much. So, um, from here, I would say, um, uh, just, I, I have to acknowledge that we are on stolen Haudenosaunee land. All of us who are in the station, certainly, and who are in this, uh, in this, um, well, New York State, really, almost everybody who's, on, who's listening or watching, many of them will be um, on Haudenosaunee land in any way on stolen land. And so we acknowledge that. And then that is where the great thankfulness that persists is so wonderful and such a great learning, learning uh, opportunity for people, for us who are, are not indigenous, for the indigenous ways. And that is why our topic is indigenous wisdom. And so we are very, very thrilled to have, I want to, uh, I, I did introduce Jill Yaguanis Claus, who is Tuscarora. She is a, um, a mom and a, and a peacemaker and a walks in beauty. But I am especially honored to, to bring our guest who's come um, on Zoom, has Zoomed in for us, Janelle Beauvais. Yay. So Janelle, Janelle, thank you so much, <laughs> yay, for our special guest <laughs> coming from, uh, who is Mohawk, coming from, where are you right now? Yeah, Janelle? so I'm uh, up here in Akwazesne, and yeah. I just want to thank you ladies for the warm welcome. I'm really happy to be here with you. Well, we're. So, I, I thought you were in Aquasesni. I was just checking <laughs> because I know you've been tr doing some traveling, and we can mm -hmm. talk some more about mm -hmm. that. But we're so excited. We know that you are doing so much as a as a community leader and a organizer, as a as a just a, such a caring and loving, strong woman, and um, and a, a courageous courageous woman. Um, so we are very, and I know that you have been helping with the Tribal Youth Council and the, the uh, uh, Tribal, uh, what is it called, uh, something forum for, po it's policy, policy and something, what is it? Yes. Law and tribal, policy. Tribal Law and Policy, Tri and I'm a consultant for the Tribal Youth Resource Center. Right. And you're a what for the Tribal Youth Resource Center? Uh, a consultant. Consultant, right. That's what I thought, advisor or consultant, right. So we're so grateful, and we know you're doing so much. You're doing so much for the people of Aquasesne and really for so many people all over. So we'll talk some more about that. Um, and before we do, if we could just quickly, we can go around, you know, on the usual counterclockwise, at least to what we see in the station. Um, and, and first, just talk about the values. When we think of indigenous wisdom, or you could say, you know, the um, wisdom of your forefathers and of your, your uh, of the, um, the, the ancient wisdom, the, the deepest wisdom, that um, what are the values that you want to uphold in the conversation? What are the values that you think of in that topic? So I'll ask uh, Jill. So we'll just go around in that way because it'll be counterclockwise. So uh, Yaguan East and then Janelle. I have to, 
I think I'd rather listen to what Janelle has to say. You know. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So Janelle, please. Yeah, so for sure, I, you know, I, you know, really appreciate, you know, all the words and, you know, I'm just uh, grateful to have the opportunity today to, you know, interact with other great human beings and it's very rewarding. And so, you know, I just wanted to, you know, acknowledge that and, you know, just appreciate the time and space that we have with each other to have these conversations, to create platforms and to, you know, continue to get, you know, truth and conversation out to people because that's how we, you know, we learn from each other. Right. So, you know, so being able to lean into some of that, you know, I just wanted to say that I feel like even in, uh, you mentioned the forefathers and I was thinking like, well, one of the values was the, our foremothers. Yes. And us being mm -hmm. this matrilineal society and so we took great value in the female for the life-giving powers but we also very much um you know in a co-creative cohesive way um we always know how to coexist with one another mm. and we know how to do that because we watch creation we watch the sun and the moon coexist with one another and we didn't see them fighting over who had who was more powerful we just seen them showing up for the people because they had a place and a purpose in this world and this universe and we knew that we were a part of that that is a consciousness from earth dimension people so we were very much in attunement with the land because that was our teacher that was how we learned to govern ourselves that's how we learned you know to even generate great messages and have great messages of peace so you know there's a lot of beauty in people's backgrounds and the origins of their spirit uh their ethnicity uh their history um, even their interconnectedness. And so I just feel like it's just a really great time. Like when Jill mentioned the pandemic, the pandemic was definitely a stimulant to a certain kind of thinking that was a sh it was a change, it was an evolution. So just being able to hear more people acknowledge that evolution within themselves, you know, is very important because usually when you evolve in some in your thinking, you get closer to the land because you're actually becoming more unprogrammed. Mm -hmm. So I know the conversation, the, the question was geared toward values. And, you know, I just, I'm kind of like in a roundabout way, weaving all kinds of things in there. Sure. But, you know, I just feel that the values that we really had were in relationship. Um, everything about us was a reflection and emblematic of relationships and how to be in relationship with one another with one another so we had principles of you know having a good mind uh having a good um having a good mind having peace and then having power and so there was these great you know um fear like uh beliefs and um practices that we had that were you know so in sync with natural law that we just were living in that and that's what our culture was you know concept conceptualized in was in you know the beauty and in the essence of the universe and i think that's what made us so you know be to be able to last this long and i also feel like there's everybody carries a certain truth to this mm. earth school you know and i just feel like indigenous people have really fought to stay alive long enough to let another generation know the truth that they might not normally have access to and so we are very much have been on a cusp of extinction you know we've experienced we're genocide survivors and so learning more about how to take back that narrative and how to put it back in the consciousness of family of of yeah of, and land in the sense of that you know we are we have an obligation to it the same way it's it's always held its obligation to us and in that way oh i would like to say too that we are also very much rooted in the practicing of appreciation and so um through giving thanks is how we solidify our relationship with things by acknowledging its essence and its value to our existence so I, I just, I, 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 I'm sorry, I got, I didn't mean to, to um, 
get distracted when I, was I just gave. I just <laughs> gave. <laughs> she threw I just a gave Jill in. something. She was called, so I gave her something to put. So I want to say your words are so moving. Oh. And uh, the, and that that is why I'm so excited about this topic of indigenous wisdom. So that itself is a value, is valuing our indigenous brothers and sisters and the great great wisdom. I want to say I love listening, I love learning from the indigenous people that I am so honored and and grateful to call friends. Oh, don't, don't be so dramatic. So how, no, no, come on. <laughs> no, well, I'm, no, I'm just <laughs> Oh, I know, I I'm love you. I love from, you so much. From Vicky. the heart. Yes, so, and when uh, hearts speak, hearts listen. So, so, uh, so that is, <laughs> uh, so the value I wanted to offer is, uh, is Gunalunkwa, Aww. is something that, actually, I think it was Dinah Porter. I hear it's a Mohawk word. Maybe I'm not saying it right. Um, <laughs> so that's one, how do you say it right, Janelle? It so is. it's good. Yeah, and shout out to Dinah Porter, too. Yeah, I love <laughs> yeah right. <laughs> and, Vic, no worries. You're doing good. And, 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 and enveloped in love, right? Being enveloped in love, right? Yeah, to be, to be wrapped in someone's medicine. Oh. Wrapped in someone's? To be wrapped in someone's medicine. Mm-hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. Wrap you in my medicine. Mm -hmm. So that, and then the Ooh. other one is, the other one that I don't know how to pronounce it, is to mention the value of the great law of peace. So how do you call it? Genera Goa. Genera Goa. I'm just reading it. Am I saying it right? Is it close? Genera How would Goa? you say it, Janelle? I believe it's the Guyana Lak Goa. Ah. Ga Guyana Lak Goa. Yeah, yeah. Guyana Lak. Yeah. Guyana I if Gana we were to learn, if we Goa. learned Mo Mohawk phonetics, we would be able to read it. Yeah. Yes. So Ganala, so that the Ganalak Goa, and the Great Law of Peace, um, so they're you know to raise that up as a value because that is, it makes me think of in the Bible. There's one place where they say, it, the words are in your mouth, and they are written on your heart. And if you're in Aquasasne. Uh huh. They say, "Is that an island? <laughs> is that a go? <laughs> oh, I, no, I, is that I an island? The, is that an island? It was a joke. Oh, How is that I, an <laughs> island? Is that an island? <laughs> okay. That's a, that's a Mohawk that's a, that's yeah, a, that, yeah. yeah, and that's a and that's a joke, and that's another great value. <laughs> yeah. So, do you have any other values that you want to offer, Jill? <laughs> Before we start, because actually that's a well, we perfect definitely. I don't want to get too heavy. We got some serious well, heavy stuff our, going on. Our 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 next topic that we were going to just it, it segue so so beautifully into. This is what we were going to talk about: the Genera Koa, Great Law of Peace. Is what we one of the things that we wanted to talk about, and how can we follow it? in this day and time. So I know there's some issues that you two were dealing with recently. Also, when I read the paper, you just see what's going on in the world. We are so far from having the great law of peace being fully operative in this world. So how can we, what part can we each do? So that, so if, why don't we go around with that about, well, sort of what is it or some parts of it because there's maybe there's so many different parts of it. So, again, I you got, I you got be some tempted, ideas, Janelle. I do. Yeah, go for it. Go for it. And then I, I want to talk. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, at this time, you know what I I want to say on the other side of the world, people go count. They go clockwise. That's what I found out when I was in Asia. So they're going clockwise. Oh. We can go clockwise, and I know oh, that's you right because this that. is a talking so circle. So we're gonna, right? yeah. So this oh. is we'll go clockwise. Oh, this time. You know what? I'll be quiet. So if Janelle, this is a talking circle. You go I ahead. Interrupt. You go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that there's been, um, you know, a really great influence out there, and I just want to speak to like spirit and us being able to have conversations about energy and spirit and mm -hmm. spirituality mm -hmm. and those like more deeper intimate parts of our thinking and our makeup and stuff like that 
And I feel as though that the the story of Guyana Lagoa and the Peacemaker is, you know, a, it's a very rich and lush story. So we wouldn't do it any justice by chopping it up. Yeah. And like, you know, but it is a great book and I would definitely suggest people to read it. But in essence, it was really about, you know, a man who was, you know, uh, raised by his mother and his grandmother. Um, he didn't have a father. He had always kind of, shown up with these extra abilities and kind of just proved himself over time to be a young person that was very much infused with a deeper sense of knowledge. And so these there's all these great um, features to the story that are really um, like just fascinating to think about, but also the journey that he makes through these tribes because there's a lot of conflict going on. You know, there was, uh, you know, uh, things of like cannibalism. So we were kind of, you know, not really being too great to each other. And so this man ended up coming and he was traveling through the communities, bringing this great law of peace. And, and in essence, it was about these three principles. And in those three principles, it would to have, be to have a good mind. I've also seen the interpretation of having um, a good message and then having peace and power and so what that said was is that if you had peace if you had a good mind that would then cultivate peace and then when you have peace you have power and the reason why you have power then is because if everybody is following that principle as an individual and makes a commitment to that then your your nations are extremely strong and so even in our language we began to greet people with sego skanagoga so we don't it's it would be uh it cheaply interpreted to say hi how are you but really you know the 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 um truth to that is we're asking if you're carrying peace with you or not and so if you have peace with you you also have the ability to cultivate unity and so that always told us what we needed to do with people. You either had war in you or you had unity. So the first time we meet you, we just genuinely ask, do you have peace in you? Are you, do you carry it? And if you say yes, huh? If you say, yeah, no, I don't carry peace with it. And then we would just proceed from there. And I think that that was a beautiful aspect of really trying to get to the essence of somebody because like that's how we knew how to be in relation. So our communication skills were just so amplified to another level of thinking because we were conscious to our environment and to ourselves. Okay, so now like leading us up to here and now you have, you know, settle European settlers come in, you have all this genocide, all this murder, all this violence. And here we are today, you know, still carrying what what's left the remnants of all of that truth and knowledge. And we're still here saying, trying to practice that. And we know that as long as we're in the practicing of these energetic um, ceremonies, that we then, you know, feed ourselves, feed our spirit, feed, feed our molecules. We are then, you know, changing um, the density and the the stuff that we're dealing with all the time. And so, I, you know, so I just want to say that, you know, the amount of pressure that indigenous people have been under, you know, only equates them to being diamonds of the world. And so I think that that's really what we're carrying in with us. And we should be valued in that way because we are rare to this point, an unfortunate, you know, close to extinction nice. point. Nice. But, but what's beautiful about that is, is the fact that weave throughout all of that is the love of mothers mm. it is love <laughs> it is the essence of love and every and every form of its expression and every ethnicity and background has their own unique expression of how they love the, the people the land their culture all that all the things that make them who they are and i think that you know we've just really kind of been fortunate enough some of us to arrive at that place to stay open-minded and say it's all included you know so in all our practicing we look to all four corners we pray to every person we pray we acknowledge the directions nobody is left out it's inclusive nothing is exempt from that expression of love because we know that creation cannot exist without it. So this is really, you know, about, I think more or less leaning in and appreciating duality, 
mm -hmm. and not so much much coming into this line of thinking where something's good or bad or this or that you know all this really um domestication that we got so this is actually for me you know really about trying to go back to being wild again you know and i mean that in a really beautiful way because i think that's what a lot of this is is people are just tired of having to conform indigenous and non-indigenous so you know i just wanted to add that if people work on themselves and they become conscious of who they are they naturally then become the human beings that are needed for the earth because they're in alignment with their environment and their their life source if you're not in alignment with your life source you will feel lost confused you know a bit like all these things and so and 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 you know and not just to say that's the only time you would feel those things but you know so it's and then you know a lot of times you know and and witnessing you know a lot of people's healings and my own you know i've just been able to you know acquire this knowledge through listening to people's pain and then watching them transform that watching them be the creators of their lives watching them become you know humble beings that are more confident and more able to walk into the world with more authenticity and genuineness and everybody wants it every single human being wants something real today and that's why you're having these conversations and bringing real people on to have real conversations because they're needed and they're rewarding and refreshing because <laughs> you know uh you know we can just feel that from one another so anyways you know i'll go on and on for this whole podcast so i'm gonna like pass it over to my system here hey, hey. oh that was wonderful yeah. <sighs> I just, I just have a wave of relaxation, mm. you know, the whole mm -hmm. peaceful feeling of your words, mm. of all the, the, the channeling, whatever you did <laughs> there. I'm so grateful. Oh, cause you know, yeah, it is fresh. I love <laughs> values. I'm going to go to values. Mm. Um, oh, oh, I have quite the journey here. Where do I begin? Um, and 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 who we are now as a people, a, and and the time that our paths get to interconnect, you know, interconnect, you know, what a beautiful weekend we'd shared last weekend. I have had tremendous love and respect for the people of the Cuyahoga Nation. You know, and especially send blessings to the children and to protect them, mm -hmm. my thoughts. And, mm. you know, it helped to gift that young man an eagle feather. You know that? Because it came right from my heart. You know? And I felt like they must have needed it. You know? It was bigger than me at that point. You know? It wasn't, it wasn't about me. It was about the children the unifier of the children. Mm. Children are the most beautiful and most important beings in the whole world. Mm. And their blessings and gifts from the most divine of mysteries, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Where mm -hmm. Their little spirits come to us as oh, pure innocence. And just... Uh, I, my um, teaching to the world is one of Ohana. I know it's from Moana, the movie. I know that. If you got a chance to see a Disney movie called Moana. I have it waiting for me. Uh, oh, <laughs> she is, uh, she, ah. uh, the ocean talks to her and she talks mm, to the ocean. Mm, mm. Just like I'm talking to you. And they have a beautiful relationship. And the movie starts out and you don't even realize the subtlety. Okay, you're watching kids run around in the yard, a grandma over there kind of keeping an eye on them, a mom, a dad, and everybody's doing their thing in this beautiful village. And you just feel so good to be there. <laughs> like, I want to go there. <laughs> and, and then it turns into the story of Moana having a relationship with the ocean. And it goes off into, and it tells the story. And... What I took from just that opening scene was Ohana, 
You know, that's family. That's us living together mm -hmm. in a peaceful way. Mm -hmm. That's what I got from it. Mm -hmm. You know, like it is so, it's such a simple thing to get along with people. You know, get along. Get along with your neighbors, you know. Figure it out. I mean, if you can't get along, then you have to move, you know. You really, there's, you know, you, you got to value the peace. I, that's what I'm, my, my value is, to, again, to the great law of peace. You know, you talked about the um, peace, power, and righteousness. And, uh, you know, in a world that, you know, why can't these people get along? What the heck? I said, go talk to the leaders of Ukraine. Sit down with this country. Sit down with that country. And say, what the heck's wrong with you? You know. Yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's a little. Odd. I just, I just want. I really can see world peace. That's where I'm headed with it. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I can see it. I can. Uh, we totally can get along. That's all. That's all I got. I know. I know we can. We have good teachers, we have good teachings. So we do. And I believe mm. in the family, Ohana. Mm -hmm. so, that, so that is a very wonderful sort of thing into, I thought we'd talk about power, but what you're really, and we can get into power, and there's so much power in both of your words. But one thing that I think of as you're saying it is sort of like, well, yes, we should be able, and as originally instructed, and our hearts tell us, and the universality of that wisdom, because the wisdom is there and bigger. You know, when they, Gandhi talked about truth-seeking, satyagraha, that it was all about seeking of truth is everything. It is that the whole truth, truth-seeking is, it covers all of it of the loving and the respect and the family and the, you know, it's, it's the, the way, a way, one way of understanding life. But anyway, and so, but the truth of it is, so we should be able to all get along and love our families. Well, we love our families also. I can tell you, I fight more with my family than anybody else I know. <laughs> You know, so there's that. And so we're just talking about when we can talk about every situation from our own f families, right? And you always work it out. To, well, that's what makes it family. That, that could be, <laughs> that's the saving grace. But what I was going to say is also this weekend that you were just talking about. So we also know that people don't get along and that some people take violent weapons and, and bully other people and do things that are wrong and unfair we know they do and violent and even and murderous and terrible 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 horrible things that people do so it is wonderful to look at the beauty and to see where it could work and how it needs to work so when it isn't working then how do we what do we need to do to proceed so you know to find the power that is the 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 truth seeking power that is, you know, to overpower the, 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 uh, the violence that can be there in the world. Or at least to pursue, pursue righteousness. You were, used the word righteousness. I think both of you did. So anyway, so on that, do we, th what, what do you think? about some of those questions, <laughs> any of them. Uh, yeah, well, no, well, it, it's, it's we're, you know, we're talking a lot of, about a lot of things that are, you know, complex and layered. Yes, oh yes. You know? So it's really, you know, always trying to be skilled at navigating through some of that. And so, you know, through my own, you know, life experience of, you know, inheriting, you know, this, these beautiful ways. And at the same time, mm -hmm. also inheriting a tremendous amount of trauma and violence, yes. you yes. know, try, trying to balance mm -hmm. all that out. Just, it's just, 
you know, something for the indigenous person's experience. And we're all collectively having that, you know? Yes. Um, and so, and so, you know, I just like to hold space for that, but, you know, to get, to lean into some of that, um, what's really pressing to me today as an indigenous woman. So, you know, you know, being able to be in community with people and, you know, really all of this work about, um, trauma and harm mm -hmm. will, walk you through families it will walk you around dads and through the kids and up to the moms and over to the uncles and back to the grandma and over and then you start to see the value of families and roles and responsibilities and yes. the way that mm -hmm. system is on or an, or an organic ecosystem for us mm -hmm. that's our protection that's our justice system those are the things that keep us grounded that give us that shape us that give us character so you know, there's a lot of um, um, ways that we can cultivate ambitious people when they're around people who are loving and supporting and constantly encouraging them to be who they are, not who we want them to be. And that's the difference. We're constantly in this conscious, unconscious piece about trying to control each other and control other people mm -hmm. and you know obviously you know having to deal with a whole slew of emotions that we're really deprived in because we're not strengthened emotionally and we're not given the time and space to be you know um developed in that way because most of the time we're just trying to survive the violence that's impeding on us mm -hmm. daily so, mm -hmm. and and to bring it back to that to that meeting that you're talking about and you're mentioning so about three weeks ago we had um our our brother community Cayuga. Uh, members come down to Akwazasna and share that they were in a desperate state of emergency, that they were being attacked by this fictitious law enforcement that was generated through a former um, uh, traditional member of their community, which, you know, his name is Clint Halftown. And I'm only mentioning his name for the sake of that. I'm really not here to put too much emphasis on him, but more of really trying to get to the devastation and the violence that's happening so you know these are some of the players that are in this but anyways there's this con there's this conflict that's happening in Cayuga right now where they have a former traditional member of their government who's now turned as a federal rep and is you know trying to take over all the homelands of the Cayuga people so uh, he could put that land into trust and build a casino and make himself a lifelong dictator of this community and apparently you know just you know be on the profiting side of all of that and so we've seen this happen before in some other of our communities and historically this has happened in all of our communities yes and so so we're, we've oh. always been under this right our lands being taken we're always under attack we're always under resource we're always underfunded and we're always being manipulated for to find ways to clean up our own genocide which yeah. is what really bothers me sometimes because it's like they do all this harm and say mm -hmm. well here you know a couple million dollars to clean it up and i don't think that that's fair either but you know what you know for the most part you know i just kind of speaking in general because there's a lot of different experiences that you know right. are in this yes. spot and different violences but speaking mm -hmm the conflict that's having in Cayuga right now is really the the children right so there's children in this community and they've had two of their longhouses demolished their school has been demolished um and their grandmother's house has been demolished um their parents have been attacked they've been assaulted they've been pepper sprayed uh they've been surveillanced for a, probably an extensive period of time and so when they came down, when the Cayuga um, community members came down and shared that they were in distress and needed some support from their, you know, sister community, brother community, you know, I really, you know, heard that call and, you know, tried to see what kind of support and resources I could get to them. So the thought was to interview the youth. And, you know, ever since the unearthing of those first 215, you know, uh, babies of ours out in camp, who, you know, that was really pivotal in, I think, the, the direction that we really needed to head forward because there was so much conflict going on and so much divide. Sometimes it's hard to find out where the solution actually is. And so for me, that really was able to um, 
bring me circle me back to children and right. how that and how that the investment into children and how you know us really buckling down and doing a better job at doing a better job by the next generation we wouldn't have a future to worry about if we were intentionally stopping cycles of abuse and being more um aggressive and more active in these movements toward changing the way that we're you know, um, agreeing to move throughout society blindlessly sometimes because, you know, and I'm taking total ownership of that. I've woken up to a lot of things that, you know, I wasn't even aware that I was totally enthralled in. And so just, you know, feeling that personal sense of power and justice within myself and looking at, you know, what it was that I really wanted and where did I want to heal and where did it hurt really helped me to then pour back into the community in a way that, you know, I felt was a healing journey for me and could possibly be, you know, a healing journey for others. And then fortunately, I just have, you know, um, the trust of, you know, some people that feel like I'm able to help them out in bad situations. And I just lean in like a sister, like an aunt, like a mother, like a daughter, because mm -hmm. those are the greatest titles that I feel that I'll ever own and that I could ever really live up to. And so, you know, when I claim those things, I hold myself responsible and accountable to them. And then comes in all my purpose, you know, so then I, I what I've been able to do for myself is just take the pain that I've inherited and, I, and that I continue to experience and then use it as a means to transform violence into, you know, prosperity or some progress. And so I've just learned to try to work with violence instead of just trying to eradicate it because it is part of duality and there is always a door that opens when there's conflict. And I felt like the issue that's happening in Cayuga right now, as, as atrocious as it is that these, you know, certain individuals feel that it's okay to attack people's homes, to put children at jeopardy, to, you know, insin insinuate and engulf them in more trauma and displacement and all of those horrific things like it it's 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 disheartening but at the same time it also creates a door for unity it creates an opportunity for mm -hmm. outside communities to show up for indigenous people it creates an opportunity mm -hmm. for men relationships that we've never really been able to say that we've had and 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 so as we continue to see these movements toward land toward water toward the safety and well-being of indigenous women and girls and people in general two-spirited i mean we are constantly under assault we are constantly in a certain phase of of genocide whether the collective you know body of society wants to pay any attention to that or not but the mere fact that we're still here, I like to believe in the greater good. And I, and I believe that I'm a part of it. And I believe that I get to work with people that are a part of it. And so that was the essence of the Guyana Let Goa, which means that single-handedly you could be broken, but collectively you can't break that. That's the power of the people. <laughs> that's the power of the land. So that's really what we're trying to mm -hmm. say. Like you have a place in this world and it's not just to self-mutilate. It's not just to absorb all the commercialism that we're constantly inundated with that, you know, corporations invest on getting our attention whatever has your attention has your power you know so again i you know i'm kind of like really you know grasping this from a bunch of different angles but the reality is is that this moment there's indigenous children that are separated from their parents because their parents are trying to trying to preserve the homelands that they have left and so i'm not saying that you know the cayuga people are not you know i totally believe they are capable of figuring out this political strife that's happening to somehow but in the meantime this does not allocate or warrant the destruction and violence happening right. toward elders in that community toward children toward people who are merely just trying to practice their cultural cultural ways and beliefs and they should still have some kind of protection there on a human level, right? Because we see government systems failing us all the time, mm -hmm. which is why the evolution was needed for us to generate new systems of justice, new systems of self-accountability, and us being more proactive as conscious human beings to cultivate healthier connections and relationships with one another so that we can feel the power of that unity, that skana, that peace, you know, the power of the people. It is probably 
probably, you know, I'm sure what we all came here and agreed to do, we all felt we were capable of coming here and being a part of something good because we knew that it was important. We knew that it was possible. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we've, we've come here on a bunch of different levels, but for the most part, we are here. And I know that I'm not the only one. And I think the more that we continue to you know, just can you know weave back into one another. We're gonna create definitely a stronger, um, a stronger, um, you know, future and a stronger generation. Right. Right. You know, definitely deserves better than the ones before them. So, so yeah. important, and it. I think of community. You know, as you're saying, and also as you talk about transforming power. So where that power comes, and you talk also about it, well, basically from the spirit and from truth and from love. The That's it. <laughs> and so much, but how to do, and one of the ways, and so one of the things when Jill and I, we, and I were talking, she said, well, we were talking about how do we know, you know, in a conflict, and I'm saying the persons who come with the weapons, there, that's where the problem. We need to come without it. it okay, with, okay, I had some ideas. Out weapon. Okay, I'm, okay. There's a few things that came to my mind. Oh, I would like to, oh, five, yeah, how much time like, we got? We're, we've got about five more minutes, so we're getting okay. on uh, low on the, so go oh, ahead. I'll boil it down. Yeah, 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 I'll yeah, boil please. it down. Okay, yeah, um, Asking all of your listeners, all mm -hmm. of the people that they're mm -hmm. going to get to talk to, um, hopefully it happens sooner than later they get mm -hmm. a chance to listen to this. Mm -hmm. um, voters, contact um, the Interior Secretary, um, mm -hmm. Deborah Holland. Um, contact her. She is the Secretary right. to the President. And, and let her know that a couple of her employees, they're federal Mm -hmm. employed right bia agent and bureau the, of indian the secretary affairs, to right? him mm -hmm. so um, deborah and Howland. that is that is i believe mr clint halftown mm -hmm. he's a federal employee uh -huh. as well as his mother sharon uh -huh. are federal employees so as such this needs to be investigated this is a story that needs to be investigated from their side of the fence, mm -hmm. you know, because you know what? If anything, you know, I see a Native American woman up there, you know, I'm going to ask her for help, mm -hmm. you know, because we have something very important happening here. Mm -hmm. And, and I believe, I believe that it affects the whole world. Even these little fights like this, it's going to oh. affect, it sends out those vibrations. And we're going to just do all we can to stop it in a peaceful way, you know, because I, I'm pretty sure their committed crimes could land them in prison, which is, right. you know, neither here nor there, other than the fact that as a federal employee, you are obligated to not break the law. Right. So... I think that needs to be addressed. Yeah, the justice. Yeah, just and and the law. Justice. No, without justice, there is no peace. Right. So. And without and I, without justice, is is there law? Because when they make unjust laws or they're practiced unjustly. But anyway, we really are oh, getting close yeah, to that's the another end of the yeah. whole. That's a. It's part of this whole struggle. So I, it's been so wonderful having both of you on. Now we still have some time to just wrap up, um, but it so goes so deep and it, it applies to so many situations, whether they're even familial or the community or the larger community, the nation. And anyway, so just uh, you both, each of you, what are the things you want people to leave that's from, uh, you know, anything special, Colonel, to give the end of the conversation? So, um, Janelle. Yes. Um, so, you know, I would really like to just, you know, put a strong emphasis out there that, you know, there's Cayuga children that are in desperate need of people's support right now. I am yes. in contact with these children. I've been going there to interview them. They are in the midst of a political warfare, and I don't think it's fair to them 
or to their families to be labeled extremists. There's a lot of propaganda happening out there. I'm still, I'm sorry to say that, of course, we can't trust media sites, and that's hard when you're to say on when you're on a media site. But you know, I just wanted to say that for the most part, like I've been going there, these children are scared. If you can in any which way, yes, call Deb Holland, call, call your county people, call whoever you can physically go there, you know, ask questions because yep. Oh, they, they just really need some help over there and any attention you can give to them and any advocacy, any prayers would be deeply appreciated and we would be so thankful. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, good. And Jill? Yeah. Earth School, Ohana, and Truth Seeking. That's my takeaways tonight of mm -hmm. our conversation. Mm -hmm. and organic ecosystem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. We have a relationship with the earth, and it's already there. You know, we're oh, the Bugs Life. Watch the Bugs Life movie. <laughs> oh, God, it's the most revolutionary film there is today. So, uh, yeah. So many ways of seeing the same <laughs> yes. truth gets repeated over and over again in every different way. So uh, it's so wonderful, both of your wisdom that you've shared, you know, and it is real wisdom, and it is real wisdom and courage and love and truth seeking that we need the good mind and the transforming power mm -hmm. for to yes. for to follow the great law of peace yes. yes yes so anyway i'm so grateful janelle and any way that people can help any other thing so people should make those calls but meanwhile any any place you want them to re seek you out or or seek any other way of helping uh, yes, so currently right now, most of the their community members that are left are, you know, just in hiding and trying to survive keeping their homes. And so they're so stressed right now and the situation's so dire, like, you know, we're just encouraging people to physically go there and try to see if there's some way, you know, you can connect with people or, you know, try to bring some support on social media. There's a lot of people that don't know about it. So even creating conversation or doing some educating around or putting comments on things or whatever, you know, there's a lot of ways people creatively come up with ways to defend people. And the media has been, the internet has been a crucial tool in shifting power in the world. And so I think that we're able to do that. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you so much. So I would just say, so thank, thank you both. Thank you for all the work you're doing. Um, and people, you know, we are, I, I can only end things off with um, saying, Nyawe. And I, and I, you know, I would say, too, that this is talking peace. And together, we have been talking peace in truth and love. <laughs>